Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to be showing you how to make a trucker style cap and for this you'll be you'll need a pattern which is available in the description box below about a half a yard of fabric and then if you're looking to make your hat really professional visit capsupplyco.com and you can find sweatbands, brims, buttons, buckles, snaps, everything you need to really bring your hat to the next level and other than that let's get started. Alright, so this is the pattern you're going to be using. If you want to use this one, um, it's available for download in the description box below. And you're, it's just uh, three panels. You've got your front, your side, and your back. And you're going to want to cut two of these and then one of the fronts. And make sure when you're cutting this out, you cut on the inside of this black line. That's going to keep the pattern the right size. And also when it comes to tracing this onto your fabric, you're going to want to cut on the inside of where you traced with the chalk. Alright, we went ahead and cut our pattern out and then we also traced it onto the fabric. We're, we're using a soft twill. I recommend using soft twill to start. When you're just getting into hat making, it's pretty easy to use. You can definitely go a diff different routes once you get more comfortable in making the hats. Um, so these are the chalk lines. And Remember to cut on the inside of those chalk lines. That's going to keep the measurements correct on the hat. Just going out a little bit will throw the whole pattern off and the hat, <laughs> the hat might not turn out the right size. And just be very cautious about that because if the pattern is not turning out for you, that it's more than likely it comes down to the cutting and the seam allowance when you're sewing it. And those it's pay close attention to. And then I went ahead and put a little chalk mark right there because that will remind us to sew that to the back panel. And because they look pretty similar, but there is just a little bit of difference there when it comes down to sewing it. And you can do what you want, either chalk mark or just remember. And we used, you can get about a half a yard to start. And that's about it for fabric. You can you can get as much as you want, but you, you probably only need to start with about a half a yard. And yeah. All right. To start, you're gonna wanna switch your thread to whatever um, color you're using for your hat. You don't have to do this. I just recommend it because it's just gonna make it's gonna make it look nicer in the end. And we're at about two stitch length on an industrial machine. It's pretty close. You don't have to go that close, it's just going to make for a tighter stitch on there and just a quality hat. And then to start, you're going to take your front panel and put the right sides together just at the top, of, top uh, seam right there. And you're going to want to do about a quarter inch seam allowance, with it, which is right up to pretty much the presser foot right there. And you're just going to sew straight down all the way through and you're going to go past a little bit. And also, another thing is too, we put an interfacing on the front panel only and that is going to keep the front panel nice and stiff and have that um, 
nice look to it and you can find if you want to take that route you can find it at capsupplyco.com I highly recommend it because it's just going to make your hats look more professional in the end all right and then take your back panel and put the right sides together and just sew along that edge the back top edge and same goes for this you're going to do about a quarter inch seam allowance because that's the way the pattern is that we made and if if you have a different pattern then you want to look into what seam allowance what it calls for Step. And this is the order that we sewed in. We sewed the front and the back because when you're gonna put your uh, top stitching, when you're doing your top stitching and covering up your bottom seam, you have to do those ones first and then you can just sew the rest of the hat together. All right, so we are using a double needle machine right here with a bias tape binder. And this allows us to get a nice top stitch on the top of our hat and also cover this seam on the bottom with when the normal hats they have this in them and this is a quarter inch quarter inch gauge and that's how wide our double needle is and pretty much this step you you don't have to have this machine to do this but this will give you the nice parallel lines parallel top stitch going down your hat Alright, so now we're going to be covering up this inside edge here and we're using a double fold bias binder, bias tape binder and we're using black bias tape that we cut out to match our interfacing which is black. You can use whatever color you want. Um, it just makes it less noticeable in the end. And we already went ahead and did, you do this also on the back part of the hat and this is what it will look like. You don't have to do this for the back part of the hat. We just like to because it makes the hat look professional and it's really efficient just sewing that on there with your bias tape and you can, you can easily cut your tape out of the same fabric that you used to make the hat. And you can, you can also hem that instead, but we just find it's best using bias tape. All right, for this next step, we are going to top stitch this, the front panel. And I recommend getting a presser foot that has, that's used for top stitching. It just makes it a lot easier and it will, it will give you a nice straight line going down the front. And you can set your stitch length a little higher. We're at about 4.5 right now. When that is done, it's gonna look, the front will look like that and it'll poke out really nice. All right, so now we're gonna sew the rest of the top together and then after that, we will add our top stitching on and when we trace this out, we marked what's gonna sew to the back panel. So we just start sewing the sides onto the front
All right, we're just gonna trim this extra little part off here and that's just gonna make it easier when we're top stitching. And you wanna get as close as you can to the seam, not too close or else it may fray out on you. And then from there, we are going to sew on our back panels and you just line it up. And when you're sewing, you just wanna make sure you keep this, the middle centered and keep an eye on that when you're sewing through because if you're using just a single stitch sewing machine, it's not gonna be walking that fabric along. So it may start to like, want that bottom might like start pull through, pull th pulling through a little bit faster. So just make sure that you're um, aware of that and keeping that centered, you might have to pull the top a little bit. Again, you can trim along that seam right there as close as you can. Okay, we are back at the double needle sewing machine. Gonna do the top stitching. And once again, this is um, our folder here with the bias tape. And it folds it down to about a half an inch. And that works really great with our quarter inch gauge. So, I mean, you can, you can play around with that to see what works best for you and what you like. But now we're just going to top stitch all the way across. And it's gonna be just like an X. We're gonna go from the front to the back panel and then we're gonna cut it and then go the same way but the other side from the front to the back and it just makes it a lot easier because you're doing a straight line and you're not turning corners and it just makes the hat on the inside when you're done look a lot more professional. Okay, so once we went ahead and surged around the bottom just to hold the, your uh, bias tape on and prevent the hat from fraying. If you don't have a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch and that should hold your bottoms together. Um, from here, once you're done with your crown, you can, if you have these available, throw on a size strip. This will keep a nice structure going around your hat. And you sew it on the inside, going all the way around the bottom.
All right, so now we're gonna start sewing the brim and um, depending on where you get your brim could be different. We have a little notch right here that marks the middle and this will come in handy when we attach the crown to the brim and we put our fabric right sides together and what you're gonna do is just trace around that outside edge. Then go down, you're gonna wanna extend it down just a little bit to give yourself some room and you can cut this off later once you've already attached your brim to the crown. So you just put it at a smaller stitch so your machine will go a little bit slower or if you wanna go fast, you can do that too. But just, I recommend almost going on the inside of the line there so it matches right up with the outside of that brim. You don't wanna go too, don't wanna go too far in or else the brim won't fit in the sleeve after you have made it. And then cut about, I would say, quarter inch around the outside. You want to have it a pretty close to a quarter inch, not a little less, because this will fold under the brim once you slide it in. When you when you turn it inside out and slide it into the the brim into the sleeve, and it'll just help with the placement. All right, so at this point we went ahead and turned the sleeve inside out, put our brim in there, and we pushed it all the way to the edge, and you can, you just wanna get in there really tight, and then you're ready for uh, top stitching. So we're using this attachment, which is a guide that will help us sew even stitches along that curve, and you can adjust it per stitch so you can go do as many as you want. We typically do three or four stitches and um, we're using this uh, just a regular straight stitch machine to show you that it works with an industrial um, just standard machine. I recommend using a walking foot and that's what we typically use but we don't want to keep switching machines and um, make it look like this process is harder than it actually is. So. We adjusted our first stitch length and So now that we have our brim stitched, we're gonna go ahead and pull this really tight and sew along the inside of the brim. And this just tightens everything up and makes your brim look nice and not loose. 
All right, so now that we have a brim and our crown ready to go, we went ahead and marked the center of our crown and that notch that I talked about earlier, just throw a chalk mark on there so when it comes, so it's easier to line up and center everything off. And from here, you just line it up and you're gonna sew I like to start in the middle to make sure everything is centered. And then just sew that first half and get as close as you can. Just push the brim up against and then work. All right, so now we're gonna sew on our sweatband. And if you're looking for already done professional sweatbands that you, you would find at a, in a hat at a store, just visit capsupplyco.com. And um, it's just gonna make your hat look a lot nicer in the end. And it's a step that you won't have to do putting together the sweatband. And from here, we're using a post bed with a roller foot. And we found this works really well when you're working around that curve of the brim, you can really get in there and sew without um, the trouble of using a flat bed. You can definitely use a flat bed and get away with it, but this is just gonna make the alignment and everything look really nice. And if you need help sourcing this stuff, just uh, get a hold of us and we'll help you get your production up and going. And we're all, we also left this flap for now and we'll, we'll trim that after this step. We just find it's easier to leave it in so you can have that little backup while you're sewing along. All right, so now the next step will be to install a plastic snap or a leather buckle, depending on what you want to, what route you want to take and what look you're going for. And with the, if you're, we're gonna go with a leather strap, but if you were going to do the plastic buckle, all you have to do is fold over your sweatband and then fold it up towards the back of the hat. And you just 
keep it nice and neat and then you're gonna slide your snap in there and just sew along that back and forth to get it nice and tight and then you do the same for the other side and then that's how you put on your plastic snap and the same goes for the buckle the leather you just put that in there and sew it um, we're gonna start with this side you want to the opposite side that you want the of the leather you just want to put that sweatband over and then sew off that side You can do this pretty much on any machine, and that's in there. All right, so now we are gonna put our buckle on. We already went ahead and poked our hole, and if, when you order these buckles, they come with a little eyelet that you put on there, and you, you can use a grommet press to put these, attach these, but it's just simple as that. Put it on. Um, at this point you can leave it like this or you can go ahead and um, put an oval eyelet in there so you can hide your buckle when you feed it through and it depends on what look you're going for we're gonna go ahead and throw this eyelet on to show you how to do it and with these you can get dies as well but we don't have them right now we're just gonna show you how to do it without the dies because they're harder to find and um, you can do it without dies, but I'm just gonna do this quick. What you wanna do is just cut a straight cut in your hat. Enough that you can feed this through. Then keep it as straight as possible. Put it through your hole, and then what you're gonna wanna do is flip your hat over and lay it down and then put your bottom piece over that, and that should push it into place. And then you see that the hole wasn't big enough and you can just snip a little bit or you can snip afterwards. But you can take a screwdriver and push that over. and I, and these little flaps, you can you can push forward with pretty much anything. But they're really easy to use and they make your hat look really nice. And this can all be cleaned up afterwards. There's, you just don't want to cut the hole too big so that you miss fabric and then it, it just uh, falls out. As long as you cut a little bit smaller and then trim later, you know that it's gonna be, it's gonna have grabbed it nice. And, all right, so now you can kind of see the shape of the hat and we went ahead and marked where we want our holes in the top to put our vents. And yeah, we're, we're using vents. Um, you can find, find something to use, um, get creative with it, figure out kind of what you wanna do for those. And um, we're gonna show you how to install these. So, the spots you marked, I'm just gonna cut little holes. If you, if you have a punch, that'll work a lot better. We're just gonna show you this way. Bare bones. Let's 
so you put your appropriate die in there for the vents you are using. All right, so now we're gonna put our button on the hat. And the reason we didn't do that before um, the vents was because it's easier to measure from the center out, um, depending on how you're installing or what, if you're even using vents. Um, some production lines, you'll see that they even just sew the holes in before they even start putting the hat together. And it depends on what, what stage of production you are doing, so. You're going to want to take your cutout circle and fold it into the center. And for this, we're just showing you it by hand so that you know it can be done without any of the proper tools. But you fold that into the center and you get it nice and tight in there. And then you're going to want to quickly move your bottom in and then give it a nice little press so that you know it's sealed. And you don't want to press too hard because once this prong, it'll go through the bottom and that will push up against inside and bend and will push out so that way your fabric is... Alright, so our video cut off, but essentially the prong will go through and it will bend outwards and push up against the fabric, locking everything together. And that will seal all that off. So what you're gonna wanna do, if you don't have the tools, you're gonna wanna put your finger right where you want it to be placed and try to line up. In the center there. And I always grab a piece of leather, something soft, so that when you pound this through, it's not gonna bend that prong. You just want to tap gently to get it start through there. And if, since you can see those prongs poking out. So once you have it pounded through a little bit so you can just see those prongs, then you're going to want to put your button on top of there and kind of wiggle it around so that those fall into a groove. And I recommend putting something over it that like leather or anything and then you can take your hammer and just pound that into place and it should lock right in there and that's how you do it without a grommet press or the right or the dies or anything but I, if you're going to be doing this a lot I highly re recommend looking into um, dies for a grommet press because it just makes it a lot easier but it's it's very doable without it and you can make a nice looking hat So now this step, I find it's very important. Um, you can you can do this or not. It's just gonna make it'll make your sweatband on the inside seal really nice, and it'll make the overall structure kind of form together. Um, we're gonna we're just steaming it, and um, you can actually use a steamer that's on an iron too. But this just kind of makes everything come together and look really clean after you get all of this sewn. So. You don't need a lot either, just, just enough to get that sweatband locked in there really nice. Alright, so there you have it. That's how you make a trucker cap. And if you followed the instructions correctly, and if you used our pattern, this is what you'll come out with. Um, based on your pattern, you should be pretty close to this anyways and if you start making these and you really like how they look and you want to sell them on a marketplace capsupplyco.com is offering a uh, new hat marketplace for the person that is making them from home or starting a company and it's a good spot to go and check out other people's hats and 
buy stuff that you won't find in the store and new ideas are always coming on there, new companies are coming on there and it's just a cool marketplace that there's a lot of hat makers are, are starting to register right now for that. Um, yeah, check it out and don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you think if we need to change up parts of the video and um, also follow our Instagram account um, that's just Proper Fit Clothing and to keep up to, up to date with what we're doing, we're what we're designing, clothes, hats, anything, um, new videos coming out. And other than that, thanks for watching and stay tuned.